right, here we are at week 10, and we got some sells for you tonight from the professor. Hopefully get rid of the guys dragging your team down through the mud as you're trying to make the playoffs and sitting there at two and – what week are we in? Nine, two and seven, <laughs> three and six. Like, all right, you need to get rid of some guys, try to go get better ones and make the playoffs. Tony, how are we doing tonight, man? I'm, I'm, I'm doing great, Kyle. It's week 10, by the way. That's what I said, isn't it? He said no, no, I said I said it's week ten, but then I was trying to do the math on what the record would. Oh, be. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, nine. okay. Gotcha. That's why I was like, Let's yeah, man. Two and what is nine? It's last night was a late night. I'm tired. You're tired. I hear you. I hear you. On the same page. I don't. Page. I'm not mathing today. Um, but I do know we got one, two, three players to get through today. I can do that math. So why don't you go ahead and school us on the first guy in your cell list tonight? Well, we talked about this so many times, um, you know, buying and selling is all about timing and uh, looking for those windows of opportunity to the right time to sell a player, the right time to buy a guy. Um, my sell this week might kind of catch a little bit off guard, um, it, but uh, I've got him on my sell list nonetheless, and that's Mr. Chase Brown with the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, and... This comes kind of along with the news that uh, that Zach Moss is most likely going to be out for an indefinite period of time, and of course, Chase Brown had a had, had a pretty significant week this past week. Um, Twenty seven carries, five catches. That being said, that's the perfect opportunity to sell a player. Uh, had a, had a kind of a little bit of a, of a blow up week. Um, my concern is not so much that they traded for Khalil Herbert. That might be, you know, maybe more of a statement about how they feel about Zach Moss, especially if he's going to be out indefinitely. It really is about the schedule. Um, his schedule, uh, rest of season, is not good. In particular, over the next four weeks, we've got at Baltimore, at the Chargers, which are two of the worst matchups for running backs. Then he's got a bye, and then he's got Pittsburgh. So over the next month, I, I, I don't want him on my roster. Um, he does have Dallas in week 14, which is a nice matchup. But then he closes out the season with at Tennessee, Cleveland, Denver, and at Pitt. So just kind of a brutal, brutal stretch for him. Um, if, if, I can, if I can find the right trade, this is a guy that I'm looking to move. Dude, those playoff matchups are like the worst teams in the league to try to run against. That is going to be crazy difficult. So, yeah, I'm with you. Take the Vegas blow-up game, try to sell high. Someone's going to see that workhorse roll and fall in love and start drooling and give you whatever you want. So, take advantage of that for sure. Yeah. Go get Tyrone Tracy instead. <laughs> who we talked about on this on the buy list so or, or kyron williams or kyron williams i don't know if you'll get kyron for chase i don't know if he's that well he's maybe that. not straight up but um but uh it's worth a shot add one of these other players that i'm going to give you to chase to chase brown and maybe you maybe that uh, that gets you kyron yeah 100 percent. so go ahead and tell us our next guy then uh next guy i'm going to give you is is a receiver um this is a guy who was very, very, very popular on the waiver wire a few weeks ago oh. and um, has, has really put up some nice numbers, had a nice little run here. But I think this is really uh, a window now for me where I'm looking to move on from him, and that's Cedric uh, Tillman with the Cleveland Browns. <clears throat> Again, has looked very, very good. But uh, they've got their bye week coming up next week. Um and then they let's see they've got after the bye week they've got um, they've got the Saints, but after that it's really a, a brutal stretch for him so at the bad. position. Um, I, I don't know of any receiver that has a more brutal lineup beginning in beginning in week twelve than than the, than the Browns. And let me just kind of read off these teams for you. It's starting in week twelve, Pitt at Denver at Pitt. KC at Cincinnati and Miami, which are one, two, three, four, six brutal, <sighs> brutal matchups. 
Um, you know, it, it doesn't look very good starting with high, and then you've got one nice matchup. Well, the kind of a neutral matchup at the Saints, and then from there on out, it's just pff, nosedive right off the cliff. So for me, you know, schedules matter. I'm going to tell you schedules do matter, and you're going to see guys streak and kind of slump. And lots of times it lines up with the schedule. And so you've got you've got some people in fantasy, maybe not as savvy, who aren't necessarily keeping an eye on the playoffs. They're just thinking about kind of winning this week or getting guys who are hot. And Cedric Tillman kind of fits the bill for me, a guy I'm looking to move. Yeah, not everybody has that foresight to look down the line and see what's coming on that schedule, especially in the playoff weeks. It, a lot of fantasy players are very much, what are you doing now? What have you done for me lately? It's that recency bias, right? Mm-hmm. So find someone who's in love with that and take advantage of it. But I – and, and you know, schedule matters, like you said, but you don't have to necessarily have somebody who has – an easy matchup every week. If there's one or two tossed in, that's understandable. Right. Most, most schedules are going to be a mixed bag. But when you see something like this, we're in a four week stretch. You've got Pitt twice, Denver and Kansas City, which are four of the toughest matchups in the league. Probably the three toughest teams in the league to throw on. You got to get rid of that. <laughs> and just a quick sidebar here for me. That goes for Dynasty as well. I know we talk redraft on this show, but that goes for Dynasty as well because I don't think he's their top receiver beyond this season. So if it's Dynasty, I say the window's the same for you here. Yeah, that's a great point. Great point. I don't disagree with you. All right. So our last but not least Mr. Irrelevant, I guess, kind of player of the night is – Cortland Sutton. Mm. Um, yeah, I think he's he's the past two weeks has had a nice little mini run, you know, over 100 yards receiving. You know, Bo Nix has certainly, um, you know, he's kind of – he's looking better and better, uh, beginning to, to uh, distance himself from some of these other – Rookie QBs um, looks like he could be a legit quarterback for uh, for the Denver Broncos, and Sutton is his top target. Um, I do want to point out that you know these two games he was up against the Panthers and the Ravens, who've been incredibly easy matchups for receivers. And I'm not a big fan of his schedule rest of season. And you know sch- schedule matters both in um, who you're playing, and also, I'm looking for guys that are that are past the bye. You know, Sutton has his bye right there at week 14. So, except 16 and 17, um, he's at the Chargers and at Cincinnati. Brutal matchups. He's at Kansas City this week. I don't expect him to produce 100 yards receiving this week against Kansas City. Um, and so, I'm just I'm I'm not a big fan of the schedule rest of season along with the buy coming off 200 yard receiving games for me that could ha- kind of help me move him and sell him for somebody that I'm going to be a little bit more trusting of. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you here. Um, and poor Sutton. He had a pretty good year last year. Then he was just starting to get some momentum this year. Knicks was starting to look good. And now the schedule is going to go to crap and he's going to be right back. I will say, if you're unable to sell him this week, you will have another window after the Kansas City game. They play Atlanta and then Vegas. I think that will will create another window later if it's not too late for your team. It totally depends on when your league trade deadline is. I would definitely go ahead and try to do it now for sure uh, before the Kansas City game. But something to keep in mind. You, you could be able maybe to trade him at the deadline if you miss it. Um, just well, you could be. I, I do think Atlanta. One thing I do want to point out is Vegas has been a very difficult against the receivers this year. They've been a, a, a bottom five matchup for wide receivers. Uh, so I don't know that necessarily in this that game is in Vegas. So I don't know that necessarily there's a there's um there's a lot there for him in that game. But 
Are uh, they bottom five because of their defense or bottom five because teams just don't have to throw on them because they're whipping their butts so bad? <laughs> you know, like that they're running be, the football. That could, you be, know? That could like, be for it. That could be true. <laughs> that could be the case. What I can tell you is that for whatever reason, whether it's game script or it's their secondary, um, they are they have not been a good matchup for receivers in, in terms of fantasy production this season. So take that for what it's worth. You could be right about that. For me, there are so many question marks here with this passing offense, with this schedule, with the bye, that I'm trying to kind of capitalize on the two back-to-back 100-yard games and mm-hmm. see if I can move them. Yeah. I'm with you, man. So go get rid of these guys. Make that final push for the playoffs or coast into them if you happen to be one of these lucky teams that haven't had injuries all year. It happens. I don't know how, but it happens. And good luck in week 10. Good luck, guys.